Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Katie, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and Kara talking about our one cool medical thing. Bonnie already talked about menstrual cups, but before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. So my question for you guys today is, when you go to the doctor, do you feel like you're listened to? Or do you ever feel like you have to fight for your health? I generally, I do feel like I need to fight for my health most of the time. Right. Um, which has made me say, okay, I need to change doctors. <laughs> right. But then there's that whole... The process of making the change. Right. You got to right. tell the new doctor all yeah. the stuff again. Yeah. and Or then my doctor will be like really insightful and I'll go, okay, I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Until they're not insightful. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. and their staff or their staff is, says things that are really bizarre. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like... I don't know if it's really worth going back to see this person. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all the specialists that I want to go see, not mm. my PCP. Right, exactly. And that's why you're just like, can I just have a referral, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I mean, I've talked about on the show my glorious fibroid problem and, you know, how having another baby will fix it. Yes. Um, that's <sighs> ridiculous. I know, right? <laughs> that I don't see her anymore. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I got to the point where I really had to fight for my health. I really had to be like, look, I have a strong pain threshold and I'm at it and I'm normally not at it. Um, I've also gotten to the point now where I write, I have a, I have like a one page like resume mm. of all of my prescriptions of all of my ailments of the last time That's I had right. periods. Cause I was having a lot of period related yeah. problems. So it had the dates and times of all of them. Uh, my favorite was a period that lasted for 42 days. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. So I made sure that that was like bolded being like, yeah. hello, not normal people. Um, and then all the family history too, because yeah. uh, for me, I'm very momentary. I'm also, I get a little white coat. I will tell you, I just, I saw ET doctors almost killed ET. And so I'm scared of doctors. Yeah. So I get in there and they're just like, do you have any family history of, and my mind goes, ah, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, it's all on the piece of paper. Now here's the paper. And they're like, do you need this back? I'm like, uh, no, I have copies. <laughs> I'm like I really this is for you please put this in my file we will reference it later when I say no uh but yeah and then of course now I'm diabetic so I have all of like my diabetes the last a1c test I've taken and what my last numbers were so it's like I feel like I have done 90% of the doctor's visit for them <laughs> all I need for them at that point is to then listen to me but the last time I went to the doctor I went because I wanted an anemia test because I really was like I was suffering from it was the 40 day 42 day period and I'm like I really feel anemic I'm really woozy and kind of out of it and apparently they ran tests for everything except anemia and I went you son of a bitch I found out later when I went into like the my chart thing they did test me and I was anemic mm. and I probably should have been hospitalized. Wow. That's so scary. Yeah, it really yeah. was. But I mean, there's the only treatment is they give you a blood transfusion. So it's yeah. either that or just like wait it out until your body produces mm -hmm. more. Like, oh, you had a blood transfusion. Oh, yeah, because you... of my anemia. There it is. <laughs> While I was um, in another city for work. Oh, mm. no. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> you get all the fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> Which is when I learned. Right. When I look at a, a flight of stairs and yes. think. I cannot make it to the top. Right. That I'm probably anemic. Yes, there you go. Right. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. And I was doing the eating every single type of food and stuff like that. It's like, whatever I need to produce more blood. But yeah, so I don't trust doctors. So that is what I have done. And I fight for my health every single freaking time. And it's exhausting. Yeah. Exhausting. <laughs> Bonnie, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I love doctors. No. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I mean, really, you know, I'm a young, healthy person. Some wood. Knock on all the wood. Um, but yeah, really, really, my only like physician that I really see that much is my uh, OBGYN. Gotcha. And I've had two so far and they've all been great. 
Nobody's told you to just just have some kids. No, <laughs> it does. It always uh, I always get kind of weirded out where they wait until I'm like in the stirrups. Yeah. And like they are like in my vagina <laughs> to ask if I want to get an STD test. And I'm like, do you see something like <laughs> do, do is there a reason? <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. That and I always feel like when they put the the four steps in there, I was I'm so scared I'm gonna like fart in their face. <laughs> right, it's that yeah. pressure. Right, and that is like my greatest fear. Oh, so, so that's why once if you decide to ever have kids, <laughs> that's completely eliminated yeah. because it's all mm-hmm. it's all open to the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've given oh. up on. Uh, discretion yeah but no the last time i was there she said i had a beautiful cervix oh very and nice. i was i was cracking up so i was like this lady's amazing <laughs> i like it compliments yeah. will get you everywhere uh, or at least into my but no i mean if you're if you're not being listened to then yeah get a new doctor like i know yeah. it's a pain in the butt but like you know your body like right. you know what's normal for you and you know when something's not right yeah like you gotta stick up for you like you only got one body. Right. Like you got to keep it going as long as you can. Apart. <laughs> yeah. I will also notice uh, whenever I go to see a new doctor, they'll be like, why are you in here? I'll be like, oh, well, my last doctor insulted me. They're very <laughs> nice to me, the new one. <laughs> 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 They're so happy I'm there. So I get like the probably the first like three or four treatments are like special. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I mean, I do recommend the switch. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them on their toes. It's like, right. remember when we used to switch long distance carriers to get the discount? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it just keeps them on their toes. Switch from Dish to Comcast to get the right. new deal. Mm. <laughs> what about you, Kitty? Um, well, I will say, I don't know if you guys feel the same. I've always sought out women doctors. Mm-hmm. Me too. My doctors yes. being yes. a female, because I definitely felt like I had a better chance of being understood and listened to yeah. right. by a female doctor. Um, and I've had good experiences with my primary care doctors. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've felt listened to the most recent one I went to in Noblesville. I was blown away by, she spent so much time with me talking to me about different things. So I felt good about that, but I've definitely had experiences where I feel like I'm going to ha- have to like fight for, for my health and what I want. And one of the biggest ones of those for me was having Jonah, my son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I had um, read a lot about how, having a baby is treated like an illness and not like a natural mm-hmm. event right and all of the interventions that can happen so i actually had a doula at my ver- birth because i knew awesome. i would yeah. i know i'm i'm not good at fighting for myself really i'm not mm-hmm. especially in that kind of situation when i knew i'd be mm-hmm. overwhelmed when you're and, in pain and yeah yes, i yeah. track to a certain extent yes <laughs> and just being really upfront with my doctor about my birth plan what i wanted to do i know a lot of people i feel like it's become kind of a Tongue in cheek, making fun of when people have birth plans because everybody's yeah, like, nothing I think it's goes. A great idea. Nothing goes it's according awesome. to plan. It's like you can but still say what your mm-hmm. preferences are, what you want to try to accomplish, like all of that. So yeah. I know that having my doula there and having that conversation with my doctor um, absolutely made a huge difference. Yeah, I wish yeah. I would have had it. I saw you go through the process, and I'm like, damn it, that's, that's such a good idea. Well, I mean, if the timing had been different, I wouldn't have known to do that. I'm very right. thankful mm-hmm. for kind of the movement we have about midwives and yep. doulas and all of that, because it's, it's definitely worth it. I was yeah. terrified I'd have to have a C-section, and I definitely would have had to have a C-section, I think, without my doula mm-hmm. and my birth plan. Right. One nurse told me I pushed for five hours with Jonah, <laughs> oh, goodness. and one nurse told me that usually after two hours, if they can't do it, they do a C-section. Mm. Right. Oh, wow. Like, cool. <laughs> you were in labor for a seriously long amount <laughs> yeah. of time, too, because I remember yeah. going, Katie's gone to the <laughs> hospital, and I felt like it was four <laughs> days later. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it was four days later. It was four days later. Yeah. There it is. Oh, yes. my goodness. Make sure you <laughs> have that in his face later. Right. Well, I was really also terrified about being induced, and they decided I had preeclampsia and had to be induced. Right. So I, they, I came it. in on a Thursday evening. Yeah, <laughs> Thursday evening, and they always just give you a little bit of medicine to get things kick-started. But yeah, I had them on Sunday. Yeah. See? <laughs> but, you know, trooper. it was, I mean... But it was, it was as good to, as it could be. And it was and it yeah. was according to your plan. It was in your, you know, to some extent, zone I definitely to had to make yeah. compromises and there were definitely yes. interventions that I never foresaw having. But yeah. thankfully, I had my doula at my side and my doula always talks about how Jonah was just an incredibly patient and good baby. <laughs> he put up with a lot. He was so patient. Oh, he wow. just wanted to stay in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I sometimes still feel like he's in there <laughs> and he's eight. But <laughs> yeah, I felt like 12 hours of labor was a lot 
but mm. well, I oh, didn't wow. like actively labor all of that time. Okay. Mm-hmm. But so she was okay. in the hospital that entire time. Yeah. being monitored. Well, they gave me the a Pitocin drip and yes. then I was trying to do it without medication. Yeah. And the Pitocin makes it so intense mm-hmm. that um, I convinced my doctor to turn the Pitocin off for a night and try to get some sleep and then see if things would get going. Good idea. Um, Good, so yeah. I went like 12 hours without the Pitocin, but wasn't a super active laborer. And then they started it up again. And finally, I was like, OK we're not making any progress. I think I was fighting it because it was so right. intense with the Pitocin. So I did the um, epidural. Right. And then I think like five yeah. hours after the epidural, I was dilated. So I had him take that out. And then we went to pushing for a million years. <laughs> yeah. And then and that then little Jonah. booger came out. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so and I, I definitely feel like I can fight harder for my loved one's health than my own always. Yeah, I agree with Very that. Yeah, because yeah. I do it all the that time for Jonah. I'm like... Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get mama yeah. bear for my kids. Right? Oh, man. No, I don't think nurses and doctors like me when I'm basically on the kids' yeah. behalf. I'll be like, Mm-mm, no. <laughs> and, like, women have such a harder time. Like, <clears throat> goodness. Women are just, like, not believed, especially when they're, right. like, having me. Especially women of color. Oh, yes. They're yeah. still, like, I don't know what they're teaching in medical school, but it's kind of like like that black women have a higher pain tolerance or something. Right. Yes. Which like, is like bullcrap. Right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. We all have different pain tolerances. That has nothing to do with race. But <laughs> like with the, the labor stuff, um, they've been doing, they've been calling it the husband stitch for a while. <laughs> Have yeah. you heard of this I've thing? I've heard of it, no. yeah. Where, so like, um, you know, you give birth, often your vagina rips. Right. So they stitch it back up. They've been, they don't even consult the wife right. or the mother, I guess. Yeah. Most of the time they'll the ask the, the husband or the, the father. Right. If they have, like, a husband stitch put in there to make her vagina canal a little tighter for him. Uh-huh. And often it causes complicated, like, they cannot have sex because it's too tight. Like, right. they can't. And the, it takes them a while to figure it out because after you're having sex, after a baby, you don't know what's it's, what. You have to wait for a while anyway. It takes anyway. them a while yeah. to figure out that's what the problem is because they oh. didn't even know it was happening. Right. And they have women who, when they're under like anesthesia, uh, medical students will sometimes come in and they'll uh, like practice Do giving. Um, oh. Oh. What do you call it? Like OBGYN yes. stuff. Pap right. smear? Yeah, like pap okay. smears and like exams. Because um, yeah. they figure, well, you know, she's asleep. Right. And it's like, this is why I had a room full of people up yeah. in there. Because they were like, <laughs> well, you witnesses. know, if she was awake, they wouldn't let us do it to her. And I'm like, then don't do then it don't here. Do it. <laughs> right. That's insane. There are actors who want yeah. those jobs. Exactly, right? <laughs> Sorry. That's what medical <laughs> studies and paid actors are for. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I've had situations where I, uh, my male partner and I mm-hmm. both went in for uh, STI mm-hmm. right. testing. Yeah. And we referred to it as STI. Mm-hmm. And they never corrected him. Oh. They never said anything to him. But to me, they're like, oh, you mean STD? Mm. I'm like, That's no. That's not accurate. No. Mm-hmm. Right. No. I mean STI. And they kept referring to it as STD. Oh, <laughs> wow. He, his results, he got in a letter that was carefully worded. <laughs> Didn't want to mm. hurt his fragile male ego. <laughs> in case anybody else opened it. Oh, I see. Mine wasn't. Mm. I mean, seeing oh the difference, gosh. and we went to the same doctor. That's and quite I was interesting, like, though. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Uh, excuse me. Gender right? study. Mm. Yeah. I'm That's like, not cool. No. Mm. Both male and female getting STIs. Right. You know, th- yeah. It tests. should be exactly the yeah. same. Yeah. Should be. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, so it's infuriating. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now that you're yeah. all hyped up and mad. Okay. Hyped up. What's your one cool thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to highlight a person, even though I love the broad Look at you. topics, and I could just keep conversing with you ladies <laughs> on this. But I found a lady who I think is really amazing. Yes. Um, and really had an effect in so many different realms, but definitely cool. in medical too. It's Lillian Wald. Have you guys ever heard of her? Not no. heard of her. Heard of her? Good okay. for you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Katie's like, stop you guys. Stop oh, them. I Googled yeah. so good. <laughs> you Googled really hard, Katie. I Googled hard. <laughs> 
Um, so she was a nurse. She was also Sweet. a social work worker and public health official, a teacher, author, editor, publisher, woman's right activist, wow. and the founder of America's American Community Nursing. Oh my oh, goodness! Right, awesome. she has quite the impressive Look at that. what year resume. We're talking like not way way back, but we're talking what eighteen hundreds or nineteen hundreds? We're talking eighteen hundreds. Okay, gotcha. She was born in eighteen sixty seven in Cincinnati, Ohio. Gotcha. Okay. Um, her parents came over from uh, Germany and Poland, the different sides, and they right. came um, because of revolutions and conflicts there, and to to find a safer, better place to raise their families. Sounds about so. Right. And her family was a middle class family. They did find. Um, financial security in the united states um and she was born in ohio but she considers her hometown new york where in new york new york new york uh rochester where all (gasps) the awesome people are from right (laughs) love rochester (laughs) so they settled there in 1878 and she definitely claimed it as her hometown Um, i would too if i (laughs) could stay there for longer than a day yeah (laughs) so she was definitely influenced by her upbringing their house overflowed with books and music um and she was really encouraged i think we see that as a common thread yes a lot of our women are just like spontaneously badasses but a lot of them do have kind of that support and And when they're parents that are encouraging yeah they seem to do a lot more right which is interesting (laughs) um she actually at the age of 16 applied to vassar college nice and they only refused her because of her age oh right so this is um a a very intelligent young woman nice yes so she decided to travel the globe um and during that time she worked briefly as a newspaper reporter gotcha and she met a young nurse that impressed her so much that she decided she wanted to study nursing and be a nurse as well if she saw it she could exactly if you can see it you can be it (laughs) sorry i tried to do it in the right tense and i did (laughs) So she went to the New York City Hospital Training School for Nursing. Cool. Um, and she graduated and actually she graduated at the age of 22. So she's still oh, wow. super young. Yeah. Um, and then she entered Women's Medical College to study to become a doctor. Sweet. Wow. Um, she never finished that training um, because in the meantime, she was using her nursing skills and she was n- using them around New York, um, working at the juvenile asylum and working on the Lower East Side where there were a lot of um, immigrant families and a lot of poverty. Yeah. And that really called to her and she wanted to help and make a difference in those places. So she didn't finish her training to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. Instead, she kind of started a crusade um, to have kind of an at-home nursing care. Oh, or gotcha. in the community nursing care. Mm, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so part of that reform took the, the manifested as the Henry Street settlement in New York. Which I have heard about and I don't know why but okay yes okay <laughs> <laughs> um but what she wanted was to live amongst the people she was serving mm-hmm. gotcha. she wanted to be there be supportive be a part of their everyday life mm-hmm. um she felt like everybody deserved to have access to medical care gotcha that it was just a basic human right no matter who you were one would think what your your ethnicity what your wealth mm-hmm. that it was just a basic requirement of life we're still (laughs) fighting for that today right (laughs) so she is credited um with starting the nursing home health service oh Mm. and she actually um helped form the national organization for public health nursing and was uh the first president of it in 1912 look at that yeah um and in the meantime she was also um encouraging a lot of promoting education in nursing gotcha so she did go to school for nursing but a lot of nursing at the time was learned just as a hands-on job yeah Mm. internship Um, kind of do it yeah right um so she was organizing a lot of lectures at columbia university um that eventually resulted in them establishing a department of nursing and health look at that so she was very instrumental in having nursing become a uh, official recognized uh kind of credentialed Right. Uh, Occupation. Yeah, like an option at Columbia. Yeah. Oh, nice. (laughs) Oh, Bonnie is going to love this one. Wald was also a suffragette. Yeah. Nice. Yes. (laughs) Um, So she actually um, worked to secure the right of women to vote, and she supported her employee and protege, Margaret Sanger. (gasps) Oh. Oh, the things. 
Um, so she Very supported nice. in the battle to get the right of birth control. Um, she fought uh-huh. for peace, leading several marches in protest of World War One. Gotcha. Um, but when war became inevitable, she pitched in to do this as part of as a chairman of the Committee on Community Nursing of the Red Cross. Nice. Um, she also helped chair the Red Cross campaign to wipe out the influenza academic of 1918. Mm-hmm. And she represented the U.S. at International Red Cross meetings. Oh, look cool. at that. Yeah. Very nice. That cross streams with so many historical ladies. It didn't it? <laughs> I mean, she was right there involved with everything at her time. Yeah. Um, and she, I thought it was incredible. I can't find my exact note in here. Um, but she also, she was so inclusive she didn't uh deny people or based on their race Mm -hmm. so she fought for everyone's rights nice um another thing she's really accredited for is getting uh nurses in schools gotcha Mm. so nurses weren't in schools prior to her um drive for access to nursing she even tried to get nursing or nurses on most work sites wouldn't oh. that be incredible to Wouldn't go to cool. work and That'd not feel awesome. good? And there's a nurse to provide care yeah. for you there like at your school? job. Like basically yeah, really. when you're not feeling well, you go to the school nurse and it's like, no, you can't go home. <laughs> so she, she was successful in the schools, right. but not so much in the workplace. Uh, um, it also sounds <laughs> like um, as part of her battle to get everybody health care, she might have had um, some of her plans were kind of the basis of health insurance oh, oh gotcha. not paint her name too black with that <laughs> right because <laughs> i think if she were here today she would definitely be going for universal health care for all right right exactly that would definitely be where she fell on that see nice so That's just a fun. super incredible accomplished woman um in 1922 the new york times named wald as one of the 12 greatest living american women Oh, wow. And wow. she later received the Lincoln Medallion for her work as an outstanding citizen of New York. Oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. That had in New York, that had to be uh, uh, a competition there. <laughs> right. Right. Nice. At that time, too. Um, and then there was I, I found myself wondering, like, I am such a, a family oriented person. Mm-hmm. I know we're all so different, but part of my main interest is my family group caring for my family yeah. that's just my passion my hobby what i like to do yeah so i found myself wondering like well did she have a family life because right. she's a very 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 busy woman mm-hmm. and that's totally cool um and i found a little blurb in wikipedia just saying that um she had some attachments but none that ever went very deep mm-hmm. because she just always wanted to be able to be on the move um, oh. She wanted to be helping and in the cause, and she just found that to be a more compelling calling. Right. There wow. you go. So, yeah. See? yeah. Interesting. I thought that was pretty cool, too. Look at that. See, he is something different for everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no. So, neat. I wish I had the knowledge to go on more and more about her because I'm finding her truly incredible. That's fascinating. So, maybe I'll inspire everybody out there and myself to look into some more information about Lillian Wald. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I- dig it she sounds absolutely amazing <laughs> right? she's right there at that kind of like transition in history too where uh, more women are being accepted and invited to become mm-hmm. nurses so it's yeah, becoming right. this like um trend so she was probably really close to the um the forefront of that of re- nurses is a respectable field and this is something we should get more women encouraged to do and things yeah. like that i also wonder for some reason i'm wondering if she crossed paths at all with um Jane Adams. It oh, feels like it's ooh, that same, same time and Jane was social work and but she was she wanted to right. go to medical school but she dropped out cuz she got sick. I just it it feels like an essence, especially pacifism. I got you. You got Jane Adams in there. Look I got you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Though she was not familiar with the work of Jane Adams when yes. she moved to the Lower East Side, Wald left the led the nurses settlement in the direction of a full fledged settlement house, ah. eventually changing the name to Henry Street Settlement. Gotcha. As she saw the social causes of poverty in the neighborhood, oh, yeah. um, Ms. Wald was also an early advocate of the creation of the National Federation of Settlements. Oh, so they there you never go. directly worked together and didn't have a but huge knowledge of each other, but they were definitely right. going in the same direction. Nice, because cool. yeah. Jane Adams went to Europe to try to figure out what these settlement houses could yeah. be, and basically settlement houses. If our our listeners are wondering, they're kind of like a YMCA or a Boys and Girls Club today. Yeah. It's the same sort mm-hmm. of system is what the YMCA uh, and Boys and Girls Club uses taking the model of a settlement house where it is uh, childcare, it is actually even like library services, yeah. it is after 
work for services. Yeah. Um, and it tries to have a variety and of even some activity jobs center. in the neighborhood. Yep. One of the things that's highlighted in the research I read about her was that she was a big advocate for providing jobs for women within the settlement house nice. and yes. paying them separately of their husbands. So they had their own economic power right. and wealth. Yeah, that's exactly. amazing at the time. Right. Yeah, because they didn't have many rights if their husbands were drunkards and taking all of mm-hmm, the money. They right. couldn't divorce them. They would lose their kids. But if they got their own money in their own hands yeah. before the drunk guy mm-hmm. <laughs> spent right. it away on the liquor, <laughs> they could pay rent. Oh, oh the thought. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or they could buy themselves booze. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we're talking my about booze. my life. Yeah, no. that's <laughs> fair. It's totally fair. You gotta buy your own booze sometime. You know. <laughs> Just get yourself Sweet. that natty light and pay the <laughs> the rent too. Exactly. It's all yeah. about, you know. <laughs> That PBR is Budgeting. not going to buy it. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're kidding about the PBR. I'm just right? kidding about yeah. the PBR. Yeah. <laughs> I had one before I came here. No joke. <laughs> See, I was, I don't know why this is a side tangent, but I was watching. Uh, so I watched Breaking Bad like way back in the day. And so there's the new El Camino, which is yeah. the continuation of Breaking Bad. It's not a spoiler at all. It's in the middle. But <laughs> this group comes into a whole bunch of money and they're sitting there having a party and they have PBR on the floor. I'm like, I'm oh, sorry. Dear. You just got <laughs> six figure payday and you went and bought PBR. <laughs> That's your party. Like, come on. You could have. Like Light and refreshing. Too. I guess. But I mean, like you're, I don't know. I just, I, that part, you know, I was like. Even if you're rich, you party how you know how to party. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Well, that wraps it up for us this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool thing as Gal's Guide to the Galaxy podcast continues. Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.